This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this is the final lecture on investment appraisal. And the third technique is something called the payback period. Now, I'll explain afterwards why it's useful, why companies are often interested in it. But the payback period is defined as being the number of years it takes in cash terms to get back the original investment. Now let me show you what I mean and uh, at the same time explain why companies are often interested in this. Example three, uh, a new project will cost 100,000 and will last for five years with no scrap value. So we're paying out now the original cost of 100,000 and we get back the cash flows, the net cash flows each year, revenue less expenses in one year 20,000, in two years 30, three years 40, four years 50, and five years 30. We're given a cost of capital for part A, uh, ignore it, it just says calculate the payback period. And we simply look at the cash flows and say, how many years will it be take to get back that original 100,000? Well, after one year, we've had back 20. That's not enough. Uh, after two years, well, we get another 30, so we've now got back a total of 50. It's still not enough. Three years, we get another 40, so we've now had back a total of 90. It's nearly enough, but not quite. After four years, another 50, we've had back 140. Uh, and so, we needed to get back 100. Well, we'll certainly get it back within four years. However, uh, unless you're told differently, we get a bit more precise. Remember, we'd have 30 back, uh, sorry, 90 back after three years, so we need an extra 10,000 to get the 100. And we say, well, in the fourth year, we got 50. If we assume that 50 comes in evenly over the four years, over the fourth year, to get 10,000, it'll be 10 fiftieths of the fourth year. It'll be three years, we've had back 90, plus 10 fiftieths of the fourth year. And 10 fiftieths is 0.2 of a year. It'll be 3.2 years. So the payback period we're saying it'll take 3.2 years to get back the original 100,000. Now the relevance of it is we want this to be the shorter, the better. There's no sort of cutoff. You can't say well, it must be four years, it must be five years. The shorter it is, the better. And the reason is that remember, all those cash flows are going to be estimates. You know, I said when we were uh, looking at their present value, they're bound to be estimates. We haven't bought the machine yet. So we estimate we'll get 20 in the first year, 30 in the second and so on. And I think you'd agree that perhaps you can estimate next year's figures all reasonably well. It's only ever an estimate, it could be wrong, but reasonably well. But the further you get into the future, 
you know, and you're forecasting the receipt in five years' time, or in ten years' time, or in twenty years' time, it starts to become not much more than a guess. You know, I'm forecasting 30,000 in five years' time. Well, how on earth would you do that accurately in real life? You know, you might end up getting nothing in five years' time. And so, the sooner you get the money back, the more certain you are that you will actually get the money back. Here, we get it back in 3.2 years. Anything extra later is almost a bonus. But the shorter the period, the more certain we are that it will actually pay for itself. Now, if you simply ask for payback period, that's it. Uh, we can refine it a little bit because, of course, we haven't taken any account of the cost of money in arriving at that. And so check, if they simply say the payback period, there's the answer. But they could ask you for the discounted payback period. In which case we do exactly the same as we just did, but we discount the cash flows first. So the flows again. An outflow of 100, inflows of 20, 30, 40, 50, 30. Now, uh, this time we'll discount them first. Uh, so um, the cost of money is 10%. Well, we've done enough discounting, so I shouldn't have to waste time here. Uh, the factors at 10% were one year 0 0.909, two years 0 0.826, 0 0.751, 0 0.683, 0 0.621. So the present values uh, 20, 20 times 0 0.909, 20 times 0 0.786, 18,180. So at that stage, that's the total we've had. 30,000 for two years, 0 0.826. 24,780. So that brings our total up, 18,180 plus 24,780. Brings the total of 42,960. Not enough. Third year, 40,000 times 0 0.751. 30,040. So add on another 30,000 brings us up to oh, 73,000. Still not enough. 50,000 after four years. Thirty-four-one fifty brings the total up to Dear, oh dear. One oh seven one fifty. So we've now hit it. We wanted a hundred thousand, remember. Uh it was three years wasn't enough. Four years one oh seven fifty. So the payback the discounted payback period. It's within four years. Uh, now here I'm not going to apportion. If you remember last time, we said it was 3.2 years or something. I can't remember. Uh, but this time I'm not going to apportion. Uh, you could do, but strictly you shouldn't because the discounting does assume that it's 20 in a year's time, that it's not spread evenly, that it's 30 in two years' time, that it's not spread evenly, and so on. Uh, but otherwise, exactly as before, but you calculate it on the discounted flows. And again, for the same reasons as before, the shorter the payback period, the better. Good. There we are. That's it.